Brian, how's it going, mate? Bad morning, bad afternoon, bad evening, everyone. What a shambolic shit show. Yeah, it really was. And uh, what did you put it down to today? Um, the most important positions in the Antonio Conte setup are wing backs. Mm. They're both pathetic. They're both yeah. incapable. Um, we get we get all excited. Oh, we signed a player from Real Madrid. He's got to be great. He's Real Madrid. No, Real Madrid are smart. We'll sell him to you because we can't play him. If he turns out good, we're buying back for you at a, a decent price. And Barcelona laugh at us, but we have a player from Real Madrid and Barcelona. Woohoo, they have to be good. They I are. Even, <laughs> I didn't even think of that, Brian. Like, both our wing backs come from Barcelona and Real Madrid, and that's how bad they are. I mean, I, I thought Reguilon was so much, so far worse than uh, Emerson today. Oh, by, by a cut, mate, he is, he is woeful. He is absolutely, and you've heard me for a while say on your show, I'm convinced he's going back to Madrid. And ever since the end of last season, he's been shambolic. An odd game here and there, he is simply not good enough. And just because he came from Real Madrid doesn't mean he gets the, woohoo, he's great, he's brilliant. No, he was shambolic. Cessignon mm. understands the and is the, the player that can play in the Conte system better. Um, you know I'm coming back in June. If Regulon needs to go, I will pack his bags for him personally and piggyback him to the airport so he can get on a plane to wherever he needs to go. Shambolic. And you know you've been talking about it. I don't know what the hell Bergwijn has got to do to get on this pitch. In, yeah. in my honest opinion, during that game, what Spurs fan in the world thought when Harry Winks came on, do you know what? It's nil-nil. We need a goal. We need a creative spark. I know. Let's bring on Harry Winks. Yeah. Conte had to take blame for that. That should have been t take off Benton Court or Skip. Uh, sorry, Skip, if only. Um, um, Hoybier, but I think Hoiberg's the only player that came out with the game with any kind of credit. Um, mm. And he should have played Bergwijn and got more attacking, in my opinion. We needed goals. We needed to put that pressure that we were saying on Arsenal. Simeon was saying to me and everyone yesterday, if we get that win and we show that it's a convincing win, does that put the pressure on Arsenal? Well, it looks like that pressure that we put on ourselves to, to, to get that win outdone us. Shambolic. Yeah. yeah, no, you're absolutely right there. Um, back on the Winks substitution, I mean, I didn't I didn't agree with it, but I'm guessing the thinking behind it was because Bentancourt was on a yellow and maybe um, he could have got sent off uh, if, he, if he did persist on the pitch. Uh, but talking about sendings off, uh, do you think Kulu should have been sent off first of all? And do you think Mwepu should have been sent off? Uh, Mwepu, yes, for the two yellow cards at some point, but Kuliseski for me is a straight red card. And I think the only thing that saved him and give credit to him is the Bryson player didn't go down like a Neymar or something, rolling around like an absolute fool. If that had happened, then I think VAR would have looked at it and then it would have been a red. Listen, when you go like that, whether you make content or not, it's intent. He intent and I think from that moment, that's what changed the game. After that moment, Kuliseski had to watch what he was doing. But mm. for me, that is a straight up red card. Yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree with you on that one. Um, Harry Kane today um, didn't drop deep whatsoever, was sticking up there, hardly got a sniff. I mean, every time he got the ball, kind of lost it pretty much. Uh, what was going on with him today? And why didn't he drop back and help out the midfield that was clearly being overrun? Do you know what? I kind of got a theory behind that. And, and we're, we're, I think we're riding our luck with this. After he got that big knock and he started walking, gingerly jogging and whatever after that, he probably doesn't want to drop deep because they're all just going to absolutely smack into him. And literally, if they all do that, you saw against Villa, they tried it. Then Bright Brighton yesterday, uh, today tried it. it we, we've got to keep him safe. And I think if he kept dropping deep, those tackles were going to keep coming in on him. And you saw with that ankle knock, I think he's one serious, like, I don't know why, but I think that's going to be a target for everyone. And we've just got to be very careful with him very careful with him, especially after this result. And that's the reason I think he didn't drop back. He probably was told um, because they're whacking into him. And I actually think as well, um, Conte, uh, with him not being there because of COVID and whatever, and we're saying, OK, modern technology, he was coaching from afar. Do you know what? I think this had a huge part to play on it because Conte from afar is nowhere near as intense as Conte right on the sidelines barking orders mm. and watching you like a hawk. And I think that's had something to do with it. Obviously, Conte can't help it. He got COVID and he had to do what he had to do. But they're the two things. A, Conte not being on that sideline and B, Kane just... We can't risk him dropping deep and getting knocks like he's been getting. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. And in terms of the top four race now, uh, how are you looking at it? 
Well, I'm praying Southampton just keep this up. I mean, it, it happens. I, I, I'm not. I, I don't. It's not even that word I want to use. But why does this happen every time? We can go on a four-game winning run. We get into the exact position where we're in prime, prime position to really stamp our authority on it. Every single time, we get four, five games on a run, and then that game where it's like, okay, this one will show that you mean business. What up? We put in a performance like that. It just happened. Do you know what? You can say Spursy when it's finals or semi-finals, but when this continuously happens, time after time, you do all the hard graft to get you there, and then you just flop. Mm. It's unacceptable. It's a lack of strength and depth. It's a, a, a lack of leadership. It's a, well, you know where Norwich I'm going with this. Norwich have just scored. Norwich have just scored two all. Two all. You know what? Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, every single Lord fucking up there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Christ, mate, how Jesus Christ, how lucky, mate, how lucky are we that, that no one wants fucking <laughs> how lucky are we that nobody wants this it's like, no, I don't want to play Champions League Jesus Christ, thank you Norwich Jeez, Obviously it's not Christ. over yet, it's only uh, 52 minutes in the game, but Man United were 2-0 up in this game at Old Trafford And do you know what, I, and I've seen fans going, oh my god, look at Man United protest well done, man, you for protesting. You protest, you get Sancho, Ronaldo and Verame, or whatever you pronounce his name. We get Eberson. Yeah. Yeah. Look, thanks. So, Are we so going to make top four, Brian? Are we going to make it? Oh, Jesus. Do you know what? I, start, I was saying no for ages. Then I then I changed. I said, no, I think we do. And just as I start warming to the idea, they do this. And I'm like, do you know what? Do you know what, mate? It's... It, we're, we're in, at the moment, as it stands, with results again somehow going our way, I've, I've got to say Yes. But as I, as I said to you, and as I've said before, and as I said when we took over the show, the Brentford game is the one that I think is the banana skin. But you're, Brentford... looking at it, you're looking at it now, now, Brian. Our next four games don't look too easy because we've got Brentford no. away, Leicester at yep. home, Liverpool away, and Arsenal at home. Yep, and I've got a good friend who's a Leicester fan, Wayne Holland. Uh, you know the story behind that, and so does Bob, who I know is in the background. And he told me a stat as well. He goes, for the last few seasons... When someone has won, like the first fixture, which we had, and obviously we know the fixture at Le uh, Leicester, I was there with Simeon and Grandpa. The other team has won the return fixture for the last four, five, six years. So if, st if stats are to go anything by it, that just became a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, it looks like no, they, these fixtures, that uh, it looked like it may have been something. It, we Brentford, I've said, is a huge banana skin. Liverpool, listen, if we can get anything, it's a miracle. Then Leicester. And then it's, uh, is it the filth then, or is it uh, another game before no, the filth? it's Liverpool, then the filth. Right, Liverpool. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, you see what mate, I mean? I said, you, yeah, it may, it, it, this is how quickly this can turn. And this is why if we've got these three points and got over the line, um, then obviously we're talking about these four games in a much more uh, better light. But now we've just put so much unneeded pressure on us. Mm. Um yeah, no, you're completely right. And Watford have just equalised against Brentford, um, which is something. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, Brian, thanks for coming on today, my friend, and uh, we'll speak to you next time. No worries. I can't do the fingers because I'm on location with the phone, but I have to say Conte <laughs> takes a bit of the blame but for the substitutes. But as always, Levy out. Yeah.